All right, welcome back to Bookshelf Tour, and let's get into one of my uh, favorite Scottish authors. Um, I don't know like, actually how many Scottish authors I've read, but uh, Lewis uh, Grassic Gibbon being probably one of the big tops, and the other one being uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. And uh, his most famous work, Treasure Island, I don't actually have a copy of. I think I've listened to it on audio so many times. I may have had an actual physical copy at some point, but I didn't hang on to it, which is which is interesting to me because it's definitely one of those books that him and 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 the relationship of 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 uh, the central character and Long John Silver are kind of like ah oh, those are things that are kind of lodged in my head. Um, another book of his that I'm really I really have fond memories of is uh, the strange case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, uh, which um, it's got like it's got wonderfully naughty not 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 and not naughty naughty and not, to, not as nautical uh, writing maybe also naughty writing in it um especially when i think about exactly what what sticks in my mind of it is i took a victorian um novels class and uh it was uh late late victorian thank goodness they like they like their shorter books oscar wilde robert louis Stevenson. this is after the great door stops um um and there was a description there's a description in it of uh of of get of of Hyde's of Hyde's place, of his um, getting into his place, and basically through the through the writing there, the, the the teacher presented us with the idea that this kind of it was a scummy kind of really dirty um, little hole of a place that this actually kind of conjured imagery of an asshole, and uh, I remember in class just being like, well, that's what. That's and um, I'm sure a lot of people looked at me because I, I gave a quite a good ex exclamation about that, being kind of so excited about it that they thought I was maybe having a bit of my own gay panic. But actually, no, I was just super, super like enthused with that idea of like, wow, you could read, you could read that into this novel as a, as a novel of kind of gay panic. And this is indeed, we're talking uh, around the time of Oscar Wilde and his trials. Uh, and then when you, when suffered, like in Victorian novels, the, all the code words of like unspeakable acts and things like that, that Hyde does in this novel, um, there's a certain amount of coding that those unspeakable acts would be, but what's unspeakable to Victorians? And one of those things being male sex, uh, male, uh, uh, male sex, uh, specifically. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, um, it really opened up, um... I think a part of the way of like, just like, this is a genre book in a lot of ways. Robert Louis Stevenson is a, is a genre writer. He wrote adventure stories for boys. He wrote horror stories, um, but has become kind of claimed through age and through critical approval, uh, into the, li into literature. Uh, but, um, that is my, that actually I think kind of taps into my thing of, I like reading genre as literature right away. <laughs> I, I, I like to take it seriously as what is this expressing about our times now, even if it's done within a genre. And I mean, that's done a lot more commonly now. I think when I was more back in the day in the eighties and stuff like that, when I was reading genre, genre was very much uh, looked down upon as just genre, silly stuff, disposable stuff. And I mean, a lot of it is. Um, a lot of actual, what gets written as literature will also be disposed of by time. And what will last is stuff like, yes, uh, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, I, of course, because I got enthusiastic, I picked up a lot of Robert Louis Stevenson, um, you know, of which I've actually read a distressingly small amount of it. Uh, there's the Black Black Arrow. Um, there's Catronia with, oh, hey, a young and dashing Michael Caine, probably being all sexist on the cover. Uh, there's the master of Ballantrine, um, another, the uh, sword fights, sword fights. So, you know, the, the thing I really enjoy about Robert Louis Simpson is he may have been, had serious, serious, more serious purposes, had, it was just a fine, fine, clean writer, but, um, he's also great about just telling, telling great stories. Uh, there's the new Arabian nights, which is a collection of his short stories, which is often kind of hailed as like one of his, uh, actual finer works of just of of um really advancing kind of writing 
uh, and storytelling. So that's another one. And another one that I haven't read, which has, <laughs> speaking of white guys going to the uh, tropics, uh, is uh, the uh, In the South Seas, um, which is him, uh, because of his ill health, he, because of his ill health, he traveled to a lot of places to try and uh, get better. I don't know if that just kind of would have been better just staying in Scotland or maybe had a restless mind as well as a weak, weak body. So um, for whatever reasons, that's another one of the books. That, it's like a lot of Robert Louis Stevenson I have to look forward to here or to reread. Uh, here, let's see if we cannot finish off this bookshelf. I've got the selected writings of D.T. Suzuki, which I believe is a Zen mind, beginner mind, I believe. Um, yeah, Zen Buddhism. Um, Buddhism crossed from India to China in the 6th century AD and, and confronted the earthly and practical Chinese spirits with the imaginative and speculative spirit of India. The encounter is one of the most extraordinary events in history and makes one of the truly phenomenal chapters in the record in the record of religious religion and culture translated into chinese idiom buddhism became one of china's most potential potent spiritual and cultural forces um i think let me but yes yeah, so the present volume composed of the work of dt suzuki's zen zen's chief exponent in english and presented to western readers by william bennett is intended to introduce the general reader to the history and spirit of zen so I mean, it's a lovely old yellowed book, which is probably completely, I guess, out of date, though. Well, I've, I've, I've carried it around with me for a while. Maybe I'll carry it around a bit more. Maybe I'll read the first sentence and go, oh, I don't want to read that ever, ever anyways. Oh, here is a bit of a Marmite book, uh, Elizabeth Smart by Grand Central Station. I sat down and wept. Um, it is more a pose prome than it is a little novella. Uh, it is told from the perspective of Elizabeth Smart in the midst of an incredibly unhappy love affair, separated by the ocean and by the war, I believe, and is incredibly interior. And I think I can, I can, it's an interior story. It's, t it's deeply, deeply interior to this woman, uh, suffering through these events and maybe making those around her suffer. I can kind of forgive it's, it's egocentric nature because it's so interior I, I um maybe elizabeth smart herself was an egocentric black hole but i can also believe that this is just reflecting a deeply felt inner life it's actually one of those ones i should sat, sit down and read again and see if i have the same reaction maybe i was a more uh self-involved if it's possible and uh um uh, emotional and romantic reader when i read it the first time which admittedly is now probably like over 20 years ago but uh yeah i have i have I have fond memories of it um then i've got my jonathan swift collection which i've got uh gulliver gulliver's travels and tale of a tub and other works uh i've read i read gulliver's travels a long time ago it's one of those ones i just want to go back to just because it's such a such a rich rich work you definitely have to immerse yourself and get yourself into that idiom uh gulliver's travels um as with the other ones are what is it like it's the 1700s well like the yeah the tale of the tub is like first publication is 1704 and uh yeah gulliver it's probably around the same time i mean it's also just sort of it's a fantasy work it's a science fiction work um i'd say it's a it's it's a savage satire, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's um, one of those ones I should should get back to. I've hold, I've held on to William Styron's The Confession of Nat Turner for such a long time, and I've heard I've heard positive things and negative things. It is a white American writing from the point of view of a black American, uh, which um, is kind of a challenging thing, and probably not the first book that people would be reaching for. Uh, in this day and this day and age, and I, I think William Siren is sounds like he's uh, enough of a writer that it might be just good enough for that. Um, I mean, it comes down to why do you read? Right? Am I reading a book for a representation of black experience, or am I reading a novel um, for a good novel, for amazing writing, for vivid characters, for beautiful language? Um, and I mean, I guess every, everybody wants everything, and they and you want you want uh, representation there as well. 
And I mean, whether it's, I guess it's the, the question is whether it's good representation or not. I don't know. I haven't read it. I'll, at some point, maybe I will crack it open. I've held on to it. I've held on to it. Uh, and the finest, final thing I have here is James Slater, A Sport and a Pastime, which I think I've read one of his other books. I can't remember which one I've read. I have the sense that I read one of his other books and I enjoyed it. Uh, it's very, um, I get the sense it's kind of romantic male. I'm probably not going to be able to flip it open to anything. It's actually going to get me anything. No, not really. But yeah, oh, it's a duck. All right. I might have to whoop, let's put myself this way. I think I might have to review the tape on that one, see if I have to edit that picture. I might have to. Uh, yeah, James Slater. Haven't read it. Uh, I guess I will at some point. I remember it being kind of like a ro kind of romantic, lush writing, uh, maybe very male writing. I guess we shall see. We shall see. All right. More, more videos later. Uh, camera mishaps. Oh, terrible.